Hello and welcome to Sports Update. We'll be looking at the latest sports news from around the region and beyond. I'm Didi Little. We'll talk about everything that's happening in the world of pro sports. I'm Madison Letterman and this is the Sports Update on AUTV. Welcome back to Sports Update here on EUTV. It was a crazy weekend of for professional sports as one postseason ended and another is heating up. There were great football matchups in the professional and college levels. But first, let's take a look at Crusader sports and the games that went down this week. For the first time this season, the Evangel Crusader football team found itself on the winning side of the scoreline. The team took on the Clark Pride in the Hart cross division play this past Saturday and the quarterback tandem of Dylan Decker and R.J. Wakeley combined to throw for 417 passing yards and four touchdowns, which helped the Crusaders secure a 28-13 victory. Wide receiver Sam Buckner received Heart of America Offensive Player of the Week honors after he accounted for 191 all-purpose yards and a touchdown for the Crusaders. Receiver Josh Tips also had a big day as he hauled in six receptions for 154 receiving yards and a touchdown of his own. The Crusaders will look to continue their winning ways as they begin conference play this Saturday as the next five games will have direct implications on the conference championship and a national playoff berth. The Crusaders will open conference play against the Benedictine Ravens this Saturday, October the 17th at 1 p.m. in Atchison, Kansas. Evangel's men's soccer team lost their game on Saturday against William Penn with a final score of 9-0. Drew Flippin gave the Crusaders their one shot on goal during the game. Many Crusaders spent time in the goal trying to defend it from the statesmen. Jacob Holman allowed one goal, Zeke Brown had nine saves and allowed five goals, and Chase Denny had five saves and allowed three. With the women's soccer team celebrating Senior Day this past Saturday, it was only right that the Crusaders emerged victorious in a 1-0 victory over the William Penn Statesman. Junior standout Bianca Bifford found the back of the net early on in the 12th minute off of an assist from Grace Wright. Junior goalkeeper Abby Schmidt allowed zero goals on four saves, and this performance, along with an eight-save performance against Mid-American Nazarene, helped her to earn Hart Defensive Player of the Week honors. The Crusaders will hit the road for a matchup with the newest member of the Hart, the Park Pirates. That game is scheduled for Tuesday, October the 13th at 3 p.m. in Kansas City, Missouri. Our women's volleyball team defeated Benedictine College on Saturday in five sets. Evangel battled for every point in the game as they had several comebacks and kept Benedictine to a 0.102 attack efficiency over the final two sets. In the deciding fifth set, the Ravens had a 9-8 lead until Bridget Peterson put away two kills and the team finished off to take home the set with a victory. Tori Lowry read, led the team in kills with 19, Bridget Peterson led in blocks with 6, and Aaron Russell led in digs with 30. Evangel will play Benedictine at home on Friday, October 16th, so come on down to the Ashcroft if you want to see a great game. Well, Madison, it definitely sounds like that this was a great week for our Evangel sports teams. Yes, congratulations on the football team's first win, and of course to all of the other teams. For sure, for sure. Like I said, it was a great week for all of our teams. A lot of teams picked up uh, big wins this past weekend, but we're also looking forward to a lot of interesting matchups coming up this week as conference play is opening up for football, yes. and volleyball is continuing a push to possibly make the playoffs as well. Yeah, we have a game coming up and we're all excited. For sure, for sure. Well, coming up next, Madison will be interviewing one of the captains of Evangel's football team, offensive lineman DJ Johnson. We'll be right back.
Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. I'm here with one of the captains of Evangel Football, DJ Johnson. Thank you, DJ, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> so um, coming off of your win from this weekend, how do you feel about the team this season? I feel really good about the team this year. We have a lot of young guys, but I feel like we can fight through adversity and continue to grow as a team and continue to keep winning. That's awesome. So what outside of COVID, what challenges do you see at, for the team this year? The biggest challenge so far this season is uh, we have a lot of young guys on the team, but I feel like the older guys we could keep keep pushing the younger guys to learn and learn each week, and we'll just continue to keep growing as a team and keep winning for the school. Lots of leadership on the team then. Yes, it is. That's awesome. So what does the second straight year being a team captain mean for you? It's uh, it's really a blessing to be a team captain here at Evangel. Uh, I've grown a lot as a man. I know, I've seen my teammates grow, uh, other than, like always. And uh, I believe that we'll continue to, like my role as a captain, I feel like I, I just keep messing up. It's a blessing to be a captain. So are there any specific roles that captain has, like aside from the other players? Uh, it's really just a lot of leadership and it's just a lot of, we just push each other. <laughs> so after three years being on the field at Evangel, how much have you seen the team grow throughout your time here? Uh, since my freshman year coming in, I've seen the team grow in many ways. Uh, there's been a lot of leadership before, before I got here. Uh, with Kay, Kelly, Cam Hardesty, and really they pushed on uh, brotherhood and community. So like now I feel like the team is really, we have one, we molded into one and it's, we're really big on brother and community. That's awesome that you guys are so close. So what are your expectations for the season this year? Uh, I feel like we could win conference and make it to the playoffs. We just have to continue to fight and just continue to grow. And uh, we have to keep leading as a captain. Mm -hmm. So is there anything specific that you think you need to grow on to make it to that conference play? Really just build, build momentum. Uh, we just got to win this past weekend against Graceland, and I believe that we continue to keep pushing. That's awesome. <laughs> so what do you think needs to um, happen for just the team throughout the whole season? Uh, first, leadership, and I think that we should just come together as brothers. Mm -hmm. And as long as we practice hard, and we'll play hard, and we'll, we'll uh, fight for each other in the school and the community out here. Is there anything that like you want to accomplish before the season's over, just like you yourself? Uh, this year, uh, I believe I could be an All-American. So I want to accomplish being an All-American this year for my teammates, for my family, and just for the school. That's awesome. That's a great goal. <laughs> so. Um, from a player's perspective, what, has, what player has stood out to you the most this season? Uh, this season has been one of our tight ends, uh, Hawk and Friend, and also D.D. Little. They both stood out to me. They, they both have great leadership. Uh, Hawk and Friend, he's made a lot of big plays for us this season. Uh, D.D.'s just now getting back off injury, but he made a couple big plays this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we'll, our tight ends are a, really a big piece of our team. And they, if they keep the seed, they'll both be All-Americans. That's awesome. So do you expect to have a lot of All-Americans on the team this year? Or? I believe we have a lot of All-Americans on the team. We have a lot of great leaders. and We have a lot of great ball players. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so do you have another year left after this, or are you done? Yeah, I have another year after this. So what do you foresee in the future? Uh, we have a lot of we had a lot of great incoming freshmen this year that came in, mm -hmm. and I feel like in the future, Evans will be pretty, will be really good. And we'll continue to grow. And uh, it's a lot of leadership in the freshman classes and the classes below me. 
And I feel like if they, if we uh, keep the community and keep the brotherhood, Evangel see a couple of national championships in the future. Are there any standout freshmen this year that are new? It's a couple standout freshmen this year. Uh, Hayden Conrad, Blake Task, uh, Kyrie Warner, uh, Dom, Dom, and it's a lot of good. It's a lot more, but those are. That's awesome. So, how did you come to Evangel? What brought you here? What brought me here is uh, one of the teammates. He's a fifth-year senior. His name is Will Jackson. Uh, I went to. I ended up going to high school with him in a school called Trinity Christian School. Mm-hmm. I came up on a visit, and uh, when I got here, it was just a lot of brotherhood, and everyone showed me love. It's just how it is now. It's it's like a big community. Uh, we all love on each other, and that's how I felt. That's what really brought me here. That's awesome that you just felt that while you were here on a trip. Yeah, it was pretty well, cool. Yeah. Thank you for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. We're excited to see how the team plays down the stretch of this season. Stay tuned as we'll talk about the conclusion of the NBA Finals as well as everything else happening in the sports world. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. In a bit of a fitting end to a historic NBA season, the Los Angeles Lakers emerged victorious in the NBA Finals, just nine months removed from the tragic deaths of Laker legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. LeBron James and Anthony Davis led the Lakers to a 106-93 victory over the Miami Heat in Game 6 this past Sunday, and this allowed the Lakers to secure their 17th championship as a franchise, which was their first since Bryant and the Lakers won in 2010. This tied them with the Boston Celtics for the most championships in NBA history, and in the process, Anthony Davis secured his first NBA championship, while LeBron James secured his fourth championship and fourth finals MVP. LeBron James became the first player in NBA history to win finals MVP on three different teams after previously winning the award as a member of the Miami Heat and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Derek Carr outplayed Patrick Mahomes in Arrowhead Stadium on Sunday, which ended the Chiefs' winning streak. The Raiders defeated the defending Super Bowl champions 40-32. The Raiders had an efficient ball control offense and a defense that corrected pass mistakes and contained Mahomes. Raiders safety Jeff Heath handed Mahomes his first interception of this season, and the Raiders sacked Mahomes three times. For the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey picked up eight receptions for 108 yards and one touchdown, and Tyreek Hill had three interceptions three receptions for 78 yards. This was the first time the Raiders have scored 40 or more points against the Chiefs since November 5th, 2000. After the hashtag Let Russ Cook trended again on Twitter, Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson did exactly that this past Sunday night. As the Seahawks took on the visiting Minnesota Vikings in prime time on Sunday night, Russell Wilson continued his MVP-type season as he threw for three more touchdowns in a dramatic, come-from-behind win which pushed his season touchdown total to 19 in just five games of action. 
Wilson found stud second-year receiver DK Metcalf for his second touchdown of the game with just 15 seconds left remaining, and this was enough for the Seahawks to secure a 27-26 victory. The Seahawks moved to 5-0 heading into a bye week, while the Vikings fell to 1-4, and they will look to rebound next Sunday against the winless Atlanta Falcons. The Dallas Cowboys picked up their second win of the season this past Sunday, but they suffered a major loss in the process. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott suffered a season-ending ankle injury that required emergency surgery. Prescott was in the middle of a season that saw him rank number one in the NFL in passing yards and rank inside of the top 10 in passing touchdowns up to that point on Sunday. Former Bengals starter Andy Dalton threw for 111 yards on 11 attempts in relief of Prescott, while Ezekiel Elliott rushed for 91 yards and two touchdowns in the 37-34 victory for the Cowboys. The Giants fell to 0-5 and will somehow look to find the win column against the Washington football team, while the Cowboys will look to continue to move forward without their starting quarterback for the foreseeable future. This will start with a game next Monday night against an explosive Arizona Cardinals team. The Tampa Bay Rays beat the Houston Astros Monday with a score of 4-2 to take a 2-0 lead in the championship series. Manuel Margot hit a three-run home run after a Houston air and made an amazing catch in the right field during the game, which led to him having major highlights of the night. The Rays have made Major League Baseball history in this championship series with 38 runs, with 79% of those runs acquired by a home run. According to the ESPN stats, this is the highest rate of a team that has played at least five games within a single postseason. On Saturday, the Oklahoma Sooners beat the Texas Longhorns in 53-45 in quadruple overtime during the Red River Showdown at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Even with Oklahoma's messy plays, Texas seemed to match their mistakes. In the first 20 drives, there wasn't a progression that lasted longer than 3 minutes and 38 seconds. But in the end, the Sooners were able to seal the victory after Trey Brown's end zone interception in the fourth overtime and Drake Stoops hauling in the game-winning 25-yard touchdown coming from Spencer Radler. Radler finished 23 of 35 for 209 yards. Well, Oklahoma versus Texas definitely sounded like a great game. The Red River Showdown always is. But that wasn't the only great game that we saw on Saturday as Mizzou actually upset the reigning NCAA champions LSU by a score of 45 to 41. And the Texas a and Aggies actually upset the fourth ranked Florida Gators this past weekend by a th with a three point victory as well. So it seems like there was a lot of great football going on this past weekend. Yes, we had so much great football, professional and collegiate. And we also had some great baseball as everything is just in full swing. For sure, for sure. We definitely have seen the Rays take a 2-0 lead against the Astros. And the Dodgers and Braves are engaging in a great series in the National League as well. Well, let's take a look at Crusaders coming up sports. Coming up this week, our soccer team will be playing here Wednesday on October 14th, the men's versus Baker University. And on Saturday, the men and women's team will be playing at Grant versus Grandview here in Springfield. Coming up for our volleyball team, we have a home game this coming Friday, October the 16th, and they will be taking on the Benedictine Ravens, and that game will be at 7 p.m. in the Ashcroft Center. So please come out and support our ladies as they try to secure another victory. And our football team will be playing in Atchison, Kansas on an away game at Benedictine College on Saturday, October 17th at 1 p.m. Our tennis uh, matchup has been canceled, actually. Um, so we will look forward to seeing the next time that they can get out and compete in Hart Conference play. We have some great Evangel games coming up this weekend. We're just so excited, especially as the football team plays Benedictine this weekend and volleyball plays on Friday night against the same team. For sure. I think it's pretty interesting that both teams are playing the same school this weekend. But this weekend is actually an important weekend for the football team as the Crusaders open up conference play. And these next five games will have direct implications on a national playoff berth and the conference championship. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Well, good luck to both of our teams this weekend. For sure. For sure. Well, that's all the time that we have today for Sports Update. I'm Didi Little. And I'm Madison Letterman. Be sure to join us next week as we bring you the latest in everything sports. This has been Sports Update on EU TV.